Indeed, joining us now, NBC News Justice reporter Ryan Riley outside the courthouse and MSNBC legal analyst uh, Lisa Rubin is on set with me. Ryan, I know we're kind of in wait and see mode um, as we await the jury's decision here on damages. Um, walk us through what they are considering. So the jury is basically getting together uh, in a room with eight of them trying to land on these numbers, right? So there's three numbers that they have to consider uh, in connection with this case. The, da the damages that the plaintiffs are asking for are 24 million each, saying that that's how much it would cost essentially to repair uh, the, the damage that was caused to these two individuals who were defamed uh, by Rudy Giuliani and other parties in the aftermath of the 2020 election. And then they could also add punitive damages on top of that, although plaintiffs and attorneys didn't really ask for a specific uh, number there, so ultimately that'll be more up to the to the jury. But basically, what they're doing is sitting in that room trying to land on what the right number is. They had asked a question yesterday, wanting to take a closer look um, at the da at the report that sort of laid out how much uh, this would cost to repair. But you know, it's safe to say, obviously, that the lives of these two individuals will never be uh, the same again. So this is something that's probably heavily weighing um, on jurors as they're ultimately trying to answer that question of just what money and dollar signs sort of to put on what Rudy Giuliani did here. Lisa, you and I were just kind of talking before. Um, we came on about really how much they were affected. And I don't think the public really necessarily understands how far this went, right? I talked about um, Ruby Freeman talking about how she was scared to use her name in public, wearing a mask to hide her identity. I know Shea Moss in her testimony as well, talking about how she was afraid to go outside, to be by herself. She still is. She talked in her testimony, Esmond, about basically exposure therapy. She has been in treatment for a major depressive disorder for the last year and a half. And mm. one of the things her therapist challenged her to do was go out by yourself, have a meal alone at a restaurant to see if you can do it. And she basically broke down on the stand describing how she almost didn't get through it, but for the generosity of someone sitting next to her at the bar who talked her ear off wow. about the Sackler family. But the other thing that strikes me from her testimony is that she tried to get another job at a Chick-fil-A. And basically during her interview, the guy interviewing her turned around a computer, showed her a picture of herself with a big words across it saying fraud. So her point was that I can't be employed yeah. even at a Chick-fil-A now, having lost my job in election work. If he is made to pay out $48 million um, to these two women. He does not have those assets. What does he do? He doesn't have those assets. So you know that his apartment is currently on the market for about $6.1 million here in New York. Then there would likely be a fire sale of some of his other assets or something called a judgment lien where Ruby and Shay would be able to attach other assets that he has, and to the extent that they are liquidated, they would be used to satisfy the judgment. They might also be entitled to future income streams. For example, the former mayor has a radio show. He likely makes some income from that and from podcasting and from other things. They will have their stakes in him and his income for some time to come if the jury awards anything close to the upper range of what we've been talking about. Do you think we're going to see a big number here? I do think we're going to see a huge number in terms of punitives especially. Lisa Rubin, thank you.